Welcome friends uh, to this first session of uh, fluid mechanics and rate processes. Uh, I would like to speak to you today about the course and the excitement in this course that we are going to see for the rest of the semester. So I would first like to tell you what is the purpose of this course. Uh, when we look at uh, fluid mechanics, uh, we would like to look at the engineering aspects of fluid mechanics and uh, you would see that uh, there are three aspects that we would be looking at as far as this course is concerned. One is that uh, if there is a fluid flow across an object, it exerts forces. Okay? The other is that if you want to move a object through a fluid, then you need to exert uh, some energy or some force on it. So you would like to estimate as an engineer what kind of energy uh, that you need to put into the object. And then the other aspect is the modification of the fluid flow uh, with respect to the heat and vapor transfer. And as an example, you can see uh, the, the desert cooler or the evaporative cooler wherein I am sure many of you have used this uh, in the summer time uh, where there is a fan and you would like to absorb uh, the humidity of the air to cool uh, the temperature of the hot air. So the f there is a breeze that is sucked in. So you put in energy, there is water uh, inside this cooler and there is a pump which kind of sprays uh, the water at the side screens and then when the air is blown, it is sucked from the outside through the side screens and then you get a cool stream. So you can see there is all these coming into action including the heat transfer and the vapor transfer. I would like to give you some more examples of the fascinating aspects of uh, fluid flow. For example, a dam, you know most of the electricity that we get is produced by uh, some kind of machines and here in this case is hydroelectricity which is produced by storing water in a dam and then as the water spills out of this dam, uh, you would like to uh, extract energy out of it maybe through some turbines and so on. Now the construction of a dam is uh, very interesting, so those of you who are civil engineers uh, or for that matter uh, engineers and scientists in general, uh, you would notice that you use these two sides which are kind of uh, banked by rocky structures like mountains, hills and then there is this you want to uh, uh, put a barrier to the water and because this water is going to enor uh, exert enormous pressure, so this wall kind of structure which holds uh, the water has to be extremely strong. So as an engineer you would like to estimate what is the force, what is the moment on the structure so that you can design it properly and there is no catastrophe. In fact, what happens as the river, as the uh, life of the dam increases, the river carries the silt and you would get uh, all kinds of things happening in it, you know environmental issues, uh, uh, sometimes you have to kind of take the silt out and therefore there is a lot that goes into the uh, foundation engineering of a dam. So that is the first aspect. And then the other aspect is you need to have some kind of a power station uh, next to this dam and extract energy out of it. So all this uh, involves uh, knowledge of fluid mechanics and its application to engineering. I am an aerospace engineer myself and this is one of the marvels of engineering. An airplane, such a heavy machine, it flies and uh, as you can imagine, it uses these wings to generate lift. Uh, so that kind of counters the weight of the aircraft and it has these four engines, uh, there could be different kinds of engines and you need to burn fuel in them and generate some kind of a thrust to push uh, the machine forward. So as a fluid mechanicist or as an aerodynamicist, you would like to know what is the lift that you need uh, to generate on this aircraft. Uh, so what should be the design of the wings to generate that lift? And also in terms of the engines, how much energy does one engine uh, produce so that you can counter the drag. Now you see this estimation has to be done very carefully. If you do not know what the drag is on your aircraft, uh, the air resistance and you would make an estimate, if you make an underestimate, uh, then of course you would end up putting engines that actually will not do the job for you. But if you put very heavy engines, large engines, then of course your airplane would become so heavy that it would not fly at all. So 
a perfect estimation of these forces is very vital to aerospace engineering. You can also see what the airplane does. So, you can see these uh, wingtip vortices which come out of uh, the aircraft and here is a model that uh, kind of we use to analyze them. We will talk about it later in the course. In fact, you can see that this one aircraft produces these very large vortices which affect flow in a very global sense. So, it is not a very local phenomena, it is a, it's a fairly global kind of a phenomena. Sometimes you would like to slow yourself down, not just fly at a large speed and here is another example, a parachute. So, there is this paratrooper who probably has been ejected from an aircraft or maybe he is doing some kind of a skydiving uh, and he just opens a parachute and would like to achieve a terminal speed which is small enough that when he lands on the ground, it is safe to take that shock on his legs. So, you would like to design a large enough parachute which actually um, would slow the person down sufficiently. But you would also like that these lines should not tangle because you know if this guy is falling down and this parachute is spinning, that is no good. So, you would like a stable parachute. So, you can see there are some, some holes kind of structures which are given in this parachute. So, again that requires an absolutely nice uh, uh, understanding of the fluid mechanics or as you would say the aerodynamics. Well, it is not just uh, flying structures, I mean even in bridges. So, here is an example of a disaster which happened because of wind loads. So, here is a bridge over one of the rivers, the famous Tacoma Narrows Bridge. And in fact, there was a uh, on one of the days uh, when it was very windy, uh, this uh, bridge started developing oscillations. And people who, who have written, who witnessed this, they have written accounts about it that these uh, galloping oscillations as we call them, they became very large and eventually it led to the bridge breaking down. In fact, those of you who have a good eye, you will notice there is a car which is still stranded um, on the bridge. And in fact, uh, there were two dogs uh, or maybe one dog uh, with the owner in the car. But fortunately, there were no fatalities, everybody was saved. But this has become a landmark uh, that uh, you could have some kind of a flow induced oscillations. Another example of this is the cables, the electricity cables. So, uh, cables that carry electricity uh, maybe over a long distance, they have this kind of a catenary structure. And then when you have a wind blowing past them, uh, you could get some kind of an unsteady flow on it and they can start oscillating and perhaps they can also fail. This is a picture of our body uh, as you would uh, be able to identify the role of the, the red and the blue colors. So, that reflects the, the pure and the impure blood. So, biofluid mechanics has become extremely relevant uh, as, as many of you would have probably seen. Uh, so, if you want to uh, have a healthy lifestyle, uh, you would like to know how much exercise is required uh, to actually have a blood flow that does not lead to build up of uh, some kind of plaque or some blockages in your arteries. So, so, you can do simulations, you can do modeling to find out what, how does the heart work and it pumps uh, the, the efficiently the blood in your body and brings it back. Those of us who would develop some kind of a disease, the heart is not pumping enough, the doctors may say, well, uh, your arteries are blocked and you need to put a stent. So, where should the stent be located? Okay. What should be the diameter of the stent? What kind of a material should I be using? Uh, so, that kind of analysis is also allowed these days, very patient specific. Some people may be, you know, may have to go through a bypass surgery. That means, one of their arteries is blocked uh, quite, quite a bit and then uh, just like you build. So, if you have a, a drain that is blocked, you build another drain to, uh, to bypass the water. So, you can do the same thing. Uh, so, the surgeon uh, would kind of bypass a blockage and you would not want to make that decision on the operation table in the theater. You would like to do that a priori. So, it is possible these days that I could get admitted to a hospital. They run checks on me and they find out where the blockage is and they can recommend to the surgeon that, hey, if you do a bypass uh, at this kind of a location, then that is best for the patient. How about an artificial heart? Okay. So, somebody needs to put in uh, a brand new device and you need to understand the fluid mechanics, 
for these devices to be robust, they should perform for a long time and of course they should require minimal energy because uh, you need to recharge these batteries and the patient would be carrying these batteries with them. Respiratory system, this has become extremely important in today's context with COVID-19 where some pa uh, patients would develop uh, some problems with their lungs which do not function in a manner they would function in a healthy person and then they are put on a device which kind of uh, aids the lung in breathing. So, uh, so you need to know principles of fluid mechanics to, to run a ventilator. Dialysis, okay. So, so there are patients of unfortunately for whom the kidneys will not work as well as they should. So, they are not able to release the toxins out of their body and therefore, they are put on a machine. There are many kinds of machines, you know, you could, you could put some kind of a, 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 a needle, take out the, pure, the impure blood, pass it through this machine and put it back into the, into the body. So, there are many kinds of dialysis machines and of course, that would also require knowledge of fluid mechanics. Drug delivery, okay. So, so I, I have let us say a, an ailment, maybe, maybe I have a headache. Okay? But I do not put the pill in my head, I mean I, I swallow it right? and, I, and then it goes into eventually my bloodstream and then the bloodstream would deliver it to my head, but it actually delivers it elsewhere. So, how much drug I need would depend on my body weight, it also depends on uh, how fast my metabolism is, uh, how fast, uh, how efficient my, uh, my, my blood flow is and so on. So, so again that is a big area that requires knowledge of fluid mechanics. You must have seen pictures like this. So, there are some advisories of uh, you know COVID that when you go out it is safe to wear a mask and this is a picture from one of the uh, famous companies who do flow diagnostics uh, and they have produced some brilliant pictures on what happens if you do not use a mask. So, they are visualizing this flow uh, using density gradient uh, based uh, some, 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 some graphics. So, so, if you can see this person is breathing. So, all his uh, uh, air that comes out of his lungs and uh, the throat, you know that creates a very big signature. On the other hand, if you use a mask, then it is very local. Okay? So, so, you could do this kind of an analysis as well. Okay? So, uh, if you want to do uh, your laundry, okay? you want to wash your clothes um, and you want to design a good washing machine. So, so the idea is that uh, you have dirty clothes, you put them in a washing machine and you should use as little water as possible because that is that's a, that's a resource these days and you want to use as little time as possible and you want to use as little energy as possible. So, so what are you going to, how are you going to design a machine that, that gives you the best possible laundry. Okay? So, the idea is that you want extremely good agitation. Okay? So, you have put some detergent and that detergent now has to go and act into the dirt and kind of push the dirt out. So, you need to have some agitation. So, here is an example of a motion. So, you would do weak motion in one direction, strong in the other and create some vortex structure and that is how you would have an efficient washing machine. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. How about sports mechanics? Okay? So, I am sure there are lots of you who are sports enthusiasts. So, I play badminton myself and I am interested in finding out why would the trajectory of a duck feather shuttlecock be different than a synthetic shuttlecock. <coughs> what exactly is the flow? So, it turns out that through these gaps in the skirt, the flows goes in, it forms some vortices and that in turn affects the forces on the shuttle. Swimming, okay? so I want to be a, a good swimmer uh, and I am told I should do certain strokes. But what is the best way of doing the strokes? Okay? Well, here is a team uh, that would like to win an Olympic medal and then the coach kind of uh, 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 visualizes what they are doing inside the swimming pool, takes pictures, does CT scans, uh, computes the flow around them and then in fact even kind of advises them that should I keep my fingers closed, should I keep them slightly open what is the added mass when I take a stroke, what is my hand position, am I flipping my legs properly and so on. Because I would like to splash the least amount of water and get the maximum thrust. 
here's a cricket ball and i'm going to actually give you a lecture uh, uh, in one of the in one one of these days when we have learned a little bit more that what causes the swing the reverse swing of a cricket ball okay the age old question can a new cricket ball reverse swing okay we uh, we hear that the ball has become old and it is reversing but can a new cricket ball swing what is the role of seam what about a red cricket ball versus a pink cricket ball okay uh, what is the effect of humidity if the if the seam kind of gets swollen up uh, because of moisture in the air so all that you could actually understand using fluid mechanics and i am going to actually show you uh, a, a in a lecture about some of the work that we had done many of you may be interested in cycling so again i am a sports enthusiast and suppose i want to do well in some kind of uh, a meet an athlete meet so the question i want to ask myself is <clears throat> and i ask my coaches that who encounters more air resistance the guy in the front or the guy at the back okay so in the sense that if i am if i am going around in a race okay uh, on a circuit am i better off following somebody for most of the race or am i better off in leading somebody in the race who has more drag okay so you can actually do these calculations okay so here is a fluid mechanics calculation which would exactly tell you what is the resistance this biker uh, faces what is the one the person behind him faces and so on soccer ball you know we are all aware of the legendary uh, uh, the swing of a soccer ball so all that can also be analyzed in fact as you know adidas comes up with new models of soccer balls uh, every few seasons and they try to make the sport more exciting <clears throat> i'm sure many of you are interested in formula 1 racing okay this is again a magnificent uh, machine which actually pushes technologies to the limit so many of you may be aware that a uh, lot of car companies they spent enormous resources in actually uh, getting uh, good machines and then some of these technologies the spin offs they come into our regular cars as well amazing aerodynamics in the sense of uh, the nose cone structure so you so you 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 are actually going at very high speed and you want uh, very little drag and you want control so what is the design of the nose cone air intake so here is an air intake uh, there could be some air intakes in the cars on the side so how do you design uh, air intakes that you get maximum uh, uh, volume flow rate inside the engine of a car but at the same time the drag uh, it offers is low okay there are actually these wing like structures sometimes they are called as spoilers on the on the racing cars and uh, you may or may not know the reason the thing is these cars are going at extremely high speed and when they take a turn okay uh, they can actually fly away so you want to increase the friction and as all of you know uh, the force of friction is directly proportional to the coefficient of friction between the tire and the road and also the normal reaction on the car and the normal reaction is proportional to the force that the car exerts on the ground so what the designer does is they put wings which are actually going to so these are like reverse wings so in an aircraft the lift is upwards in a car the lift is downward so i have more downward lift so in fact the car actually feels heavy so i have more friction and therefore i can turn at much larger speeds than i would if i did not have these reverse wings in fact you will be amazed that these spoilers these days can generate so much of uh, downward lift they can actually fly uh, uh, you know inverted on a roof so so in principle uh this room in which i am sitting a, a, a formula 1 car could actually uh run uh upside down on the roof uh, very exciting okay so these were some of the applications that uh that should excite you about why you should study fluid mechanics okay and of course the related heat transfer as well as uh the mass transfer i now want to shift some uh the attention to some flow phenomena okay that at least i find very exciting and sometimes they are even counter intuitive and i would like you to enjoy this uh, this gallery of motion so i have 
taken these pictures from Professor Van Dyke's uh, uh, book, An Album of Fluid uh, Motion. So I have not given the credits on each slide. I thought I would just uh, put them up front. Uh, so most pictures are taken from this book. If you get uh, your, an occasion to look at this uh, book, you know, I, I strongly encourage you. So we start from the very basic, okay, flow past a circular cylinder. Okay. It is the simplest possible configuration to study a flow. Why? Most other shapes would be complex, okay. they have more geometric parameters. The simplest shape is a circle, there is only one geometric parameter and that is the diameter of the circle. No sharp edges, extremely smooth. So I would imagine that the flow past a circular cylinder should be a piece of cake, you know, everybody should be able to guess what happens, wrong. Actually, it's extremely rich. Okay, it's it's so fascinating. I hope I can convey that in the next few slides. So we define something called a Reynolds number, and I'm sure you have studied that in your class 12th. So Reynolds number is, as you as you remember, uh, density of the fluid times the length scale, which in this case is the diameter, uh, times the speed of the flow, and divided by the viscosity of the flow. Okay, it's a non-dimensional number. So Reynolds number can be thought of as a non-dimensional speed if you fix the diameter, if you fix the medium, in this case it is the air. So if I increase the Reynolds number, I get, it means I am talking about a increased flow speed uh, coming into uh, this domain. So this is a picture at extremely small flow speed and the flow has been visualized by using aluminum powder. So you sprinkle aluminum powder and then when you take a picture, uh, these little particles, they reflect uh, light and you can actually see uh, what the flow looks like. So you can see the flow is symmetric about the x axis. In some sense, it is also symmetric about the y axis. So it is enough to look at the flow only in one quadrant. You can see a trace of a flow bubble being formed here, which is actually more clear if I increase the Reynolds number. So here the Reynolds number is about 10 and here it is about 13 and you can in fact see there are some vortices, uh, standing vortices as we call them, they appear. Standing in the sense that they just stand there, just like you talk of standing waves in physics, you can talk of standing waves in fluid mechanics. So there are these little eddies which get stuck there, so fluid particles go not only around the circular cylinder, they even go around these eddies and the flow in the eddies is, you know, they just keep going in circles. And then if you increase the speed further, let us say about 26, then these eddies become larger in size. Okay. So, so far what has happened, I had a uniform flow coming in and with increase in speed, I get these two standing vortices which seem to increase in size okay, as the Reynolds number increases.